nice to see you again for another dyno video of my favorite amplifier range from Rockford Fuscade, the punch series from the 90s or the early 2000s. And of course I'm going to dyno another classic. This time I got a punch 500A2. This is a model, it's from year 2000 or 1999. This one is rated 125 watts per channel into a form load and 250 watts per channel into a tourm load. So, Let's go to the dyno run. So I'm going to check the idle current of the amp. And the amp is idling fine at 1.6 amps. And the first test is continuous power bridged mono 8 ohms, which is the same 4 ohms per channel, both channels driven, if you divide the value by 2. And I expect the amp to do more, much more than rated power. I go straight up to the clipping point. Let's zoom to the scope and start the dyno. I start to give the signal. And I reduce the gain a little bit because I see a little bit of clipping. So that's clean. Take a single shot, stop the input. So I got a peak voltage of 78 volts. And this equals an RMS output voltage of 55.15 volts RMS. And this is 390 watts, sorry, this is 390 watts mono bridged of continuous output power, 8 ohms. This divided by 2 is 195 watts per channel into a 4 ohm load continuous output power, both channels driven. Let's go and check out the dynamic output power at 8 ohms mono. I drive a 1 kHz signal 20 cycles into the amp. I take a screenshot and here are my cycles. And what I have to explain is that if I am measuring an amp or if I make an amp dyno, I make sure that all the cycles are the same value. So I know that there are uh, the amp manufacturers who only measure with eight cycles. So if you have only eight, eight cycles, you have a minimum frequency simulated um, of 125 Hertz. So I use 20 cycles. With this, I simulate a minimum frequency of 50 Hertz. And let's take a deeper look. And now I have a peak voltage of 81.6 volts with an output voltage of 81.6 volts I have an RMS voltage of 57.7 volts and this equals 426 watts of dynamic output power mono bridged 8 ohms that's the same like two times 213 watts per channel into a 4 ohm load both channels driven let's continue to bridge mono 4 ohms I start to give the signal right now. Hear my power supply buzzing. I take a screenshot. I have a peak voltage of 66 volts. And this equals an RMS voltage of 46.66 volts. This equals 544 watts of continuous power into a mono 4 ohm load. This is the same like 2 times 272 watts per channel into a 2 ohm load. Both channels driven of continuous output power. The dynamic output power test with 20 cycles like I do it will deliver something like this. I take a screenshot. So. I have a maximum output voltage of 73.2 volts. This must be something around 660 or 700 watts of dynamic output power. So now I squeeze out some more watts out of the amp by using just 8 cycles and simulating a minimum frequency of 125 Hertz. I know that there are professional amplifier manufacturers who are testing in this way and this will just give some higher values in your data sheet. So I start to give signal and capture the screenshot. And there we have it. I have a peak voltage of 76.8 volts. 
there we have 756 watts of dynamic output power mono 4 ohms and this equals 378 watts per channel into a 2 ohm load dynamic output power both channels driven. Just for fun I drive only one cycle of 1 kHz dynamic burst so we can also see that we can squeeze a little more output power out of the amp for just one millisecond so I start to give the signal and there we have it and now I have a peak voltage of 81.6 volts this is the same like 57.7 uh, volts RMS and this equals 853 watts of dynamic output power for 1 milliseconds mono 4 ohms. You can see if you have a shorter signal you can get more watts out of the amp but this is just for fun. This means nothing. So now I'm going to make a very hard test for the amp and the amp will get much warmer. I have connected 2 ohm resistive load bridged mono to the amp. This is the same like driving the amp per channel with a 1 ohm load and this is a very hard test because I do it in a continuous way and if there is an increase of output power then you can dare to make a 1 ohm mono dynamic power test. I take a single shot and I have 51.6 volts of peak power, sorry peak voltage and this equals 36.48 volts RMS output voltage and this is a continuous output power on 2 ohms of 665 watts mono 2 ohms continuous output power into a resistive load the hardest test for an amplifier mono 2 ohms 98 amps out of the power supply mono 2 ohms dynamic power and there we have output voltage on cycles the same level of 61.2 volts and this is an RMS voltage of 43.27 volts RMS and this equals believe it or not 936 watts of dynamic power mono 2 ohms so now I'm just trying to do a dynamic output power test mono 1 ohm so what I found out if I want to stay in the IHF202 standard which tells you to measure 20 cycles with the same level. Um, in this case I have 20 cycles at the same level but it's only 33 point something watts and uh, this equals around 500-600 watts. You see here the amplifier gets higher and is losing output power in the last cycle. And now I'm just using the peak voltage of these cycles here. And there we have, okay, we take 51.6 volts. This is an RMS voltage of 36.48 volts. So we have 1330 watts mono 1 ohm. This divided by 2 is 665 watts per channel, both channels driven dynamic power into a half ohm load. So 1300 watts mono 1 ohm dynamic power with just 7 or 8 cycles. So you see that we can squeeze out a lot of this amp and we can make our data sheet look much better. There are devices out there where you can dyno some amps and they put out some numbers but you should always use the scope and check out in this case we can take the first two three cycles everything is cool and here it goes down i'm just interested in these devices who can measure output power are they taking the average amount of output power between the highest and the lowest cycle or do they just the, uh, takes the highest cycles with no clipping. I don't know. I don't have information. If you do have information about this, it would be very interesting to share this information with me or with all the others here.
Yeah, and if you liked this video and I hope you enjoyed it, you can post some comments down below or give me a thumb or subscribe to my channel. And if you already did, don't forget to hit the bell button to get informed for another Dino Run video, which I'm planning in the near future. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time for another Dino Run of another old classic from the 90s. Bye bye.